4,500 kilometers of uh, highway that I bicycled from Vancouver to Ottawa. And uh, I landed here and I had, uh, I had all kinds of plans that, uh, well, of course they do, they fall apart. And so, I mean, I'm doing my best right now. I, I got my guitar, I had to sell my bike to get this guitar. So I'm doing okay right now. So nobody can tell that I'm here unless you're within like 10 feet of the place. So that's the best thing about it. And I, uh, I try to keep it clean, but it was always a big mess. Somebody had already been here. All these like toppled trees and so on leaned up. They, they start creaking and cracking in the wind, just like groaning and stuff. It's like you're kind of expecting one of them to fall on you, but it, it's, it's not gonna happen. It's a pretty good structure. So why do you uh, stay outside? For a person who wants to stay away from the drug scene uh, and have many uh, pretty serious reasons to in my life, I, you know, I, 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 I have struggled with addiction and, and, uh, and I still do sometimes and it's not a good idea to be hanging around in those places because, well, the draw is there and people who uh, would partake in that sort of environment uh, and use drugs, hard drugs, uh, well, it's there, and it's a vice, and it's a vortex, and it, it just, it, uh, I'd rather avoid that. What is the uh, hardest thing about being homeless? Uh, isolation and loneliness, mostly. I, I'm finding that uh, when I do meet a friend and it's uh, uh, time for conversation, I'm relishing the moment. And so when I do finally get some sort of chatting with somebody and uh, especially about this situation in life and whatever and uh, telling jokes to try to overcome everything that's that that's been that's been really good the many people I come hang out with now in Ottawa they come from up north and uh, well they're living outside and just as I am so it's like I'm, I have one of like a thousand stories that could be told and it's, it, it's not pretty, it's, it's very dark. You're trying to uh, come through with some kind of like explanation for how the, actually the trauma plays out and how, um, how, how it affects somebody. You just sound crazy. The mind kind of like puts it in a shelf and puts it away and puts it in a box and well, hope it goes away. Well, it doesn't. I have uh, not properly do diagnosed uh, uh, post-traumatic stress disorder. Uh, because I've, I've witnessed too many things, and uh, um, I... Uh... There's definitely something going on that uh, needs to be told about, and, uh, um, th and the, that's the whole reason that uh, uh, so many young men commit suicide up north and there's so many social problems that we have to face uh, alone and because the country doesn't, re it, it just wants to look away kind of thing most of the time and, and, it's, and it's not anybody's fault for not knowing except um, the situation up north in Nunavut, specifically in Baffin and, and in the Qalwit, um, we need to stem the tide at some point and somehow make it known and make it plain as possible that uh, Inuit and especially young men up there and w young women too and children uh, are in a lot of trouble. Somebody needs to sit down at our table. Trauma causes mental damage. It's psychological damage, not a disease that people are, are under. There is uh, virtually no benefit to or any effort taken to, to try to go at the source of the problem, not just the symptoms, they're just fixing symptoms. Ezra, what, what's your dream? To see my daughter and her mom happy. I have uh, my, my kids about four now, and uh, her mom and her are uh, waiting for me to get well enough. 
she's out there somewhere and she made me she made me promise even my kid when she's at her age when she, I spoke to them last she was three and I said to her daddy in the big city fighting monsters <laughs> <laughs>